And I was like, okay, go ahead. So they moved me to from seven to eight. I'm like, I gotta wake people up now. Oh, okay. But surprisingly, people adjusted. Yeah. They moved. That's good. I don't think 100 percent, obviously, but yeah, because folks still want to sleep in. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. It still worked. So. Yeah. Well, um, Patrick, catch us up because last, you know, we saw you uh, was, I think, West Virginia and it was snowing was it <laughs> when snowing? you were leaving and uh, uh, coming back here. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, what, what have you been up to? So, I've been uh, acclimated, of course, in being with my family and taking some time with them and, of course, uh, working. Uh, and uh, that's been primarily it. So, you know, just re-engaging within the community, uh, going to different things here and there, uh, letting people know that uh, I'm still here and as supportive of them today as I was then. For people who don't know, so you are a radio host on 105.3. Um, tell, me, tell me about it. So on 105.3 FM, uh, I'm an on-air talent uh, for a show called At the Table with Canon, uh, where it's reliable, balanced, and resourceful. And we try to make sure we come at it in a way where it's open dialogue for people to be able to express what they're thinking, what's on their mind, uh, fiscal conservative type issues we talk about, uh, anything in the way of education, economic development, crime and public safety. Uh, we just cover the gamut in terms of topics, if you will. Yeah. What made you decide to run again? You know, I'm a native Charlottean, one of the few, so they tell me, right? Uh, but Growing up here, being born here, uh, I have a genuine love for this city. I do. And I have a love for the people that reside within the city of Charlotte. And for nearly half my life, uh, I've dedicated my life to, to serving this community. That inspires me. It encourages me to want to continue to be able to um, help those that wish to live, work, raise a family, and even recreate here in the city of Charlotte. And so for that reason, and wanting to make it a still great place for a quality of life, uh, I like to re-engage. And also, of course, because I love our city. Patrick, you took more than $50,000 in bribes while you were the mayor. Why should voters trust you again? Well, because what went on then is certainly something that I'm not proud of, right? Uh, but what I can tell you is this. That's not Patrick Cannon today. The Patrick Cannon today is someone who represents a level of honesty, humility, someone that's objective, someone that's grateful and willing to go the extra mile to do whatever I need to do in order to be able to make sure that people understand that I'm looking to put them first uh, in our community to move us forward to address all those various issues that are before us right now. Where's the proof that you've changed? Proof only comes when you're able to provide someone an opportunity to be able to show you themselves what that looks like. For instance, if an employer goes and releases you with or without pay because of something you may have done on the job, uh, when you come back, you know, you have an opportunity to redeem yourself, right? To be able to show your employer that you're worthy of being able to take on that responsibility again and do it in a very good way. So that being said, I still have to be able to prove my worth to the citizens of Charlotte. And how do I do that? The only way that I'm able to do that is for them to consider uh, reelecting re -electing me uh, to show them what I was capable of uh, in terms of the level of services that I did then versus the level of services I can produce today. And if I think if anyone goes back and they look at our record, whether they, if they go to patrickcannon.org, they can see those initiatives and compare that across the board with anyone else in terms of, you know, who's looking to buy for office and say, you know what, if he was this capable then, he's got to be this much more capable today. But I think that has to come by way of me being able to earn that level of trust. Uh, and the only way I can earn that level of trust is to be placed back in a position to go ahead and move, you know, work to do those things that will be most pleasing for the citizens that reside here. You had that level of trust. You violated it. Why do you deserve a second chance? I think I just responded to that. And then, two, I, I would hope that this community 
is one that believes in forgiveness, that believes in grace. And remember, this is the Bible Belt. Uh, and it's a place I, where I've seen forgiveness and where I've seen grace and mercy be rendered by people after individuals have made mistakes like I made a mistake. The people today that are building some of our buildings, right, some of them have needed second chance opportunities and they're getting those. The people that make the clothes that are on each of our bodies, some of them have made mistakes and have been given second chance opportunities. This would be another opportunity where people could come together and say, you know what, he's paid his dues, he's gone and done what needed to be done there and look, he may be worthy of a, an opportunity again. And if the community would be so willing to grant us that opportunity to serve them, to be about economic development and public safety and uh, issues surrounding land use and whatever it might be, we certainly want to do that. The one thing I've not done is not worked very, very hard in our community uh, getting what's due itself, especially when you look at things like the CIAA tournament, which I was responsible for bringing here. When you look at uh, doing something to reduce homicides in our community, where I then in turn brought about a homicide task force that we need back today because it was so, uh, it worked so well then. Uh, when you look at what needs to be done in, in the areas of like homelessness, uh, we need more work done there for wraparound services. And affordable housing is really important, right? But what good is it to create affordable housing if nobody can afford it because they don't have a job? Uh, so the poverty levels are things we need to change in our community as well. From 2009 to 2014, so for five years, you accepted bribes and cash when you were city council person and mayor. You could have stopped at any point. You didn't stop until you got caught. I don't think that that 2009, 2014. That's exactly what the, the court documents say. Well, I think During when that they period. were- During that period. I'm not certain what the court documents might suggest, but maybe there could be something else. But what, what, what's your question? I'm sorry. You could have stopped at any point, but you didn't stop until you got caught. Why should people trust you? People should trust me because you know something that I did that I wasn't doing then? I wasn't taking a cognitive behavioral course, which is a level 500 course, where I had an opportunity to be able to go and to really understand uh, thinking errors, right? Uh, and those are some things that can be applied today and have been applied by me since I've been back. And so it's really important from my perspective to be able to lean on those things that have helped me in the way of doing what's called rational self-analysis, right, an RSA, uh, which would help me and anyone else, but especially me, deal with making sure I'm responsible for my actions my beliefs and what they may be, and also being able to evaluate the consequences. Those are things today that you know, are right before me and that I look at day in, day out. I'm human, I made a mistake, I'm not perfect, uh, and so in the midst of falling short, I've asked this community for forgiveness, I continue to ask them for forgiveness, and to allow us to be able to move forward in a way where I can go on their behalf, with their level of support, where I should say we should go together because working together works and that's the only way to get it done, but to address those issues that are before our community. Can you tell me about prison and what you took away from there, what you did, how did you change, and again, why should people elect you after what you did? So there I went to, uh, of course, I took on behavior modification, uh, courses for an extent that really, I mean, went on well beyond that, largely in part because in doing that, I also became an instructor and helped others in that same space who were struggling. And uh, along with that, being able to engage on the side of healthcare where I pretty much uh, was the lead there on the administrative side and, uh, you know, doing things of that nature, but then also, um, being accepted to the University of West Virginia. I was in, involved in their inside out program there. So 
that again gave me an opportunity to be able to work with people on the outside as well as individuals on the inside and we worked to kind of map out some things in terms of dealing with the criminal justice system, not dealing with it, working with the criminal justice system to be able to um, bring about some things that should be on the conscience of those in Washington and beyond. Um, I, I was reading over some of the things that, um, you know, during your sentencing and some of the things that were said, and one of the FBA agents in charge said, Patrick Cannon sold his oath of office, violated the integrity of our government, and betrayed the citizens of Charlotte. Would you vote for you? Absolutely, I'd vote for a renewed Patrick Cannon, day in, day out because I know the real Patrick Cannon. I know his heart, uh, I know his love, and his desire to want to make his community and the, the people that reside within it a wonderful place for all of us to live and to work and to raise our family and even recreate. Asking for forgiveness is one thing, mm -hmm. but asking for the people to trust you in an elected office is a completely different thing. Why should they elect you? I'm capable. I have a track record that shows that whether it's in economic development, whether it's in public safety, whether it's in transportation, whether it's with our environment, whether it's housing, that I'm more than capable of being able to bring about those things that people care about. Not only that, I'm responsive. Always have been responsive. From a rollout container that wasn't picked up to a barking dog. People called me and continue to call me today about those same issues, even though I'm not a member of the Charlotte City Council. So it, that in itself says something, um, to me anyway, that people still feel confident uh, that I'm capable of being able to do something on their behalf. I'm really humbled by that, uh, because who, who does that? So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that that will be something that uh, will carry over in terms of people wanting me to continue to do that for them. You also have a track record of taking bribes. How do voters know that you won't do it again? I have no reason to, right? Just as I didn't have a reason then. Uh, Why but did e you but do even it more then? importantly, Why even more important even more importantly, it's a situation where going forward if I'm to be reelected, which I'm asking the citizens to consider me for, I'd not have another meeting with anyone else without making sure that somebody happens to accompany me at that meeting. Secondly, uh, it's important to make sure that from even a service request, that there's something padded there to ensure that uh, there's a process where people can actually go and get their service request taken care of without there being any concern about anything. And I think, you know, when there are some things were, were reported about service requests being made, public officials call city staff members, right? That's how you have to get the ball rolling in order to be able to create something you're trying to resolve for someone. Uh, I just want there to be clarity, you know, so that, and transparency so that there is no question about how we move forward. And I think with some of those stops in place, uh, it can help us to get to a place where everyone wants to be and that is just to simply be served. Tell me about that. You said you won't have another meeting without somebody else present. What, explain that. So it's important to make sure that when you're discussing, in my opinion, and where I am today, any city business uh, where I don't care who it is, if it's a developer, if it's someone interested in relocating to the city, uh, if it's someone that me wants to meet on public safety or economic development, what have you, uh, it just, I think, provides a layer uh, of insurance, if you will, to make sure that all minds uh, are getting the information right there together uh, and hearing what's being discussed and talked about in those meetings so that, again, there can be some level of transparency where there is no question. I don't want to leave a question anywhere. And I think making sure that, you know, someone is there from staff or whomever it may be 
uh, will be important to, to have. It's just, I think, an extra layer of, of, of caution and protection that I would want to, to be about. Certainly when you've gone through something like I have, uh, I think you, come, you want to come full circle making sure that you're putting, putting in all the protections that you possibly can. You said you didn't have a reason to take the bribes. Why did you? Wasn't thinking. No rhyme, no reason. Wasn't a uh, thing that I had been accustomed to doing. Remember, I was elected when I was 26 years old back in 1993. And then all of a sudden, one day, I'm going to decide that that's what I want to do. Um, I mean, it's just, that's not who, that's not who I am. And it's not the same person that I would suggest that anybody look to become. The person that I am today is not that person of yesterday. And so we can talk about a decade ago. We could talk about 20 years ago. Um, but that's what it was then. What we know today is that it's not 10 years ago. It's not 20 years ago. Today is today. And my hope is that we can move things forward. Uh, because there are a lot of issues that, that affect our city. And this, in terms of the past and what has gone on, yes, should be brought up. I think it's important to talk about it. That's why we're doing this. But what's also important is where we are in our community. We're at war right now. We got gas prices that are out of the roof. Huh? $25 spending on $4.09 a gallon, you know, gets you six gallons of gas. We're in some trying times right now. So what happened to me 10 years ago, uh, which I, again, am sorry for, has to be something that I reckon with that is yes, yes behind me, um, while still acknowledging it because I do embrace it. I embrace it from this perspective. There are other people that have gone through similar things. Mm. We had a mayor in uh, Marshville, North Carolina, do, uh, be sentenced for 28 years. He did 10 of those years. Came out, became mayor of Marshville, and did an extraordinary job. In fact, he wrote a book called Inmate, From Inmate to Mayor. And so that in itself, I think, can show a community how a person like Frank Deese, the former mayor of Marshville, can go through something and come out on the other side. Can Patrick Cannon do that same thing? Absolutely. With any level of support that people happen to give and where he has completely and totally made up his mind, absolutely he can do the same thing. Patrick, you filed on the last day to file for city council. Mm. Uh, you know, unlike some others, you know, there were crowds, you know, for your opponents, a, you know, big crowd of people. Mm. Um, it was just you, you know, going in there filing. Isn't that great? Did you think, though, that people would forget this? Did you think that so many new people coming to Charlotte? Why would I think they would forget that? I mean, listen, if I thought they were going to forget it, I knew that you all were going to make sure they weren't going to forget it. <laughs> and that's okay, because it's important for people to know um, background, right? It's important for people to know and understand capabilities. Uh, and so I'm not a fanfare kind of guy. So I was perfectly okay with just going in and doing what needed to be done and coming on back out. Besides that point, I had a relative and still have a relative that I am a caregiver for. So I needed to get back to my loved one to be able to uh, be there for her, where I still am, by the way, uh, and have been since that day. So as soon as I got there, I filed, um, uh, went to my vehicle, understood she was having a tough morning, uh, and, and got to her. And so I'm still over there. 24-7 right now. We talked a little bit about what you, um, why you deserve a second chance and, and what, how you've changed. But when people Google your name, they still see you went to prison for taking bribes. Good. While you were yeah. in office. Yeah, that's right. How are you going to overcome that? I mean, 
Uh, do you really think that you're going to be able to overcome that? Overcome Google? Overcome, <laughs> overcome what people see when they Google you. I can't, I can't overcome what people see, uh, but we can overcome together because working together works. We can overcome it by deciding that, you know what, we have some real issues here in the city of Charlotte. And what was, was. Uh, and we can decide to, to move forward or we can live in the past. Uh, it's my hope that knowing and understanding what we have in the wake of homelessness and poverty and issues around you know, public safety, as well as economic development, that we can still come together today and work together. And if not, you know something? One thing I've learned is that whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, there's some people that are going to love you no matter what you do. And good, bad, or indifferent, there are going to be some people who are not going to love you no matter what you do. That's just life. It's what it is. There's nothing I can do about it or the next person to try to change it. Because if somebody is where they are, they are where they are. And we can respect that because everybody's entitled to their opinion. And I just want to be able to do what I can to make a difference in our community. And if it's someone that says, you know what, I don't want you making a difference for me, that's fine. I can understand that and I can move forward. Uh, and if there's someone else that says, you know what, I do want you at the forefront, Patrick Cannon, because I know what you can represent based on what you have represented for us. So, yeah. How can you prove again that you've changed though? That's, you know, what, what you know, if, if I'm looking at this and I'm looking over you as, as a candidate, how do I know you've changed? The only way to know if anyone has changed is to give them an opportunity. I spoke to her earlier. And <laughs> again, I think it's, it's a situation where if you are placed in a position, well, let me back up. If you're not placed in a position, there's no way for you to ever know, right? How a person can be placed in a position to do what you expect them to do. I think the example I gave was if an employer happens to suspend you and yet you, know, you come back at some point, your performance uh, is expected to change. And based upon that change in your performance, your employer decides to keep you or they let you go. In this case, the employer for me would be the citizens of Charlotte. Uh, I suspended myself and not proud of that and now I'm asking for an opportunity to be able to come back so that they can monitor me, take a look at that level of performance and determine if indeed I'm someone that they would continue to want to support going forward for the city of Charlotte. I pray they will. What are your big issues you want to focus on if you're elected? Certainly economic development is front and center for me, always has been. And so I, I think making sure that women and minorities have an opportunity uh, to be included uh, in opportunities that uh, the city has, uh, that's, that's important to me. Making sure that how we move forward with some of the big items around even the football team, the Carolina Panthers. Apparently, you know, Mr. Tepper has some interest in wanting to do a few things here and there. Uh, I think it's going to be important for the city council to make some good, sound decisions with regard to whatever it may be. I'm reminded of when Truist Field uh, came to us, right? And I so wanted baseball because it was an affordable sport, right? Everybody can't afford some of the other sports around here to go to and see. But that was when I knew that people loved and appreciated, right? There was a push to go and to uh, pay for it with property taxes. Being fiscally conservative as I am, I'm like, no, because the, the least of those can't afford it. Why would we want to do something like that? 
So in my opinion, it's really important to make sure that we work to find other avenues for opportunities like that. And so after I posed that question and fought to find another source, funding source, we ended up coming back with the hotel motel tax dollars to be able to pay for what was needed for uh, the baseball stadium to, to come into fruition. That's the kind of thought process that I would hope that the entire body would have, mayor and council, finding out where there may be opportunities for us to be able to look at to move forward. Transportation is also so, something that's very important. And how we move forward with that. Mobility is essential. But we have to make sure that, again, uh, what is the right funding method? Right now, the talk is a once in sales tax, right? Can we make that happen? Uh, should it happen? So we need to have that conversation, as well as about land use. That's a really, really big issue right now and something we need to get our arms around, along with homelessness. That's also important. Many things. <laughs> many, many things, yes. Anything else you want to add, Patrick? No, this has been, no. I don't want anything else. <laughs> this has been, you can continue. <laughs> no, right, I'm sure I can. <laughs> I want to be mindful um, of yeah, your I time. Yeah, I just always ask. No, so. that's, that's, that's appropriate. I appreciate you asking. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for talking with me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you.